Fairview's cottages are organized insofar as possible to house the same kinds of patients in their own living unit. Fairview was funded actually in 1907 by the Oregon legislature and it opened in 1908 as the uh, Fairview Home for the Feeble-Minded. That was the original title. Up until the year 2000, Fairview served nearly 10,000 people. Fairview was an institution for people with developmental disabilities. It was intended for kind of a lifelong community where people with disabilities went to and lived out their life. Once detected and the family agrees that their child needs institutional life, the local courts step in or voluntary commitment may be arranged. After proper medical recommendation, the child is committed to Fairview. I remember going there and then uh, living on the cottage because my dad couldn't take care of me. I was lonesome. It just felt like, like a prison. People often wanted to try and make it sound like it was, well, this is, you know, living in a college dorm. It was nothing like living in a college dorm was a warehousing type of communal living. I've been here about eight, seven or eight years. I was 15 when I went to Fairview. I did make some good friends there. And some of the people that worked there were nice, but some of them were not, most of them weren't. They determined when people got fed, when people got to go to bed, how often they got to change their clothes. Those simple things in life were all controlled by somebody else. It's like a prison. Yeah. You have to follow all the rules. Yeah. And I don't mind the rules. If you don't mind the rules, you're punished. Yeah. One ward in Bird Cottage is for a group of patients who are both mentally retarded and psychotic. Until tranquilizing drugs were introduced, two-thirds of them were in restraints. They gave me a lot of medicine, and, and I could not do anything. The more disturbed girls are kept together in Ward 5, where they spend most of their day on the play porches. A few unusual behavior problems need additional isolation to protect themselves as well as the other girls. Somebody might kick you and slap you, and that's not good. Hello, I'm Jim Swenson, and let's take a look at a preview of tonight's stories. Oregon's institution for the mentally retarded is under fire again. The federal government has demanded the state make changes. When I first started there, they were finally getting rid of certain things that they used to use back in the days of old. When I was there in 1985, it was the end of the use of straitjackets. Helmets were only used for patients that were, uh, would fall. I just can't think of uh, things that at that time, everybody was working so hard to be better. She has no neck control, and we'll we work on her neck control. It had to be a very difficult place to work and very difficult conditions and that a lot of the people probably tried to do their best there. My job was to close Fairview. When we declared that we would close, I had to organize kind of what that meant. We did plans for every single person there, got to know what's important to them, what's important for them, and where are their families in the community, so where would they move back to. I was so happy when I left in Fairview. I glad I'm not there. I glad they close. When I got out of Fairview, I was very happy to get out of Fairview. Um, it was like a whole new world were opened up to me. I felt good that I got to leave. Oh, 
now I can do everything by myself. Support for Move to Include comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people.